Nintendo is by far one of the best publishers and developers in the video game industry. They single handedly revived the industry in a precarious time in the late 80s, and have helped forge the path for many other developers and publishers who thrive today. All in all, they're a crucial part of video game history, and they're responsible for many mega influential hits present day. But that doesn't mean that they haven't had their flubs, though. The gaming giant has occasionally released a miss from time to time, so today we are taking a walk down memory lane, counting down our picks for the top 10 worst Nintendo games ever. Let's get to it. In at 10, Donkey Kong Barrel Blast. Donkey Kong's history with Nintendo is a monumental one. Alongside Mario, he was one of the first characters that shot Nintendo into the gaming superstardom that it now boasts today. Donkey Kong of the late 80s is very different from the modern day Donkey Kong that we're familiar with these days though, causing the franchise to endure a handful of misses over the years, one of which includes Donkey Kong Barrel Blast. This game was initially developed for the GameCube but found itself also getting onto the Nintendo Wii. From poor graphics to bad controls to downright unadventurous and predictable gameplay, it didn't do well in the eyes of critics or players, although it is worth noting that the controls on the Wii version were better, incorporating a bongo control scheme that was much more fitting for the title and way more fun to play. My Pokemon Ranch the Pokemon franchise is one of Nintendo's most successful, but it has encountered a few fails over the years. My Pokemon Ranch is one of those blips and is largely considered to be one of the least aesthetically pleasing in the series. It also has a particular shtick. If you had Pokemon Diamond or Pearl, you could upload your Pokemon to this 3D space that allowed you to interact with them through your Nintendo Me character. Except here's the thing. It looked ugly as hell. The Pokemon themselves felt like dollar store knockoffs, the graphics were poor, and the game itself didn't really have a whole lot of mechanics to offer players. It just kind of felt pointless overall. And at number 8, Disney's Magical Mirror starring Mickey Mouse. Now that's a mouthful of a title. Here we have a GameCube title that was released in 2002. Disney's Magical Mirror starring Mickey Mouse was initially assumed to be a platformer when it first was announced in 2001, but turned out to be a very different title by the time it got its preview at the 2002 E3. Based on the plot of the 19 1936 Mickey cartoon called Through the Mirror, the title had a lot of potential, and parts of it served as a great homage to the early animation. But despite all of this, players had a lot of issues with the game, particularly the complete lack of instructions and the redundant cutscenes, which primarily featured Mickey being chased or Mickey falling through to the next gameplay area. Overall, it was just a simple point and click that didn't really appeal to players, even ones from the youngest of demographics, who many believe that this game should have been geared towards anyways. And at 7, Flip Wars. Flip Wars is one of the most recent titles to make our List. Released in 2017 for the Nintendo Switch is an action tile matching game that's considered to be a party game, a genre that the Switch really excels at with other titles like Mario Party or 1-2 Switch. Flip Wars didn't manage to share in that success. Instead, its lack of complexity caused players to lose interest. It got panned by critics for its simplicity and lack of imagination. For the most part, it uses basic game mechanics to flip tiles and match them, and its aesthetic is very simple, more so aligning with the kinds of titles that you would find on successful mobile apps rather than full fledged console games. That being said, it was a digital exclusive for the Switch that only cost 10 bucks, but many felt that even then their money was wasted and could have gone towards something much more compelling. And at 6, Chibi Robo. Photo Finder. Chibi Robo is a series that has been kicking around since the days of the GameCube, having first released a title with Nintendo back in 2005. For the most part, their games all fall into the platformer adventure genre. But in 2013 2014, they released Photo Finder, which swayed from the series' typical focus of performing tasks and cleaning up. Instead, you had to go around your house, find objects that match shadows, and then take photos of them. So the novelty of the title wore off pretty fast, as you can imagine, and it began to feel like more of a chore than a fun game that had you coming back for more. And at 5, Pokemon Rumble U. When you heard the title Pokemon Rumble, one would imagine that the game would be a fighting title featuring Pokemon characters in a vein obviously different from the way that they battle in the main Pokemon RPGs. And yeah, that's true. While it does live up to the genre expectations, it did fall flat though thanks to its lack of doing anything interesting. For the most part, the title got a lot of heat for being somewhat of a cash grab. The mechanics were so basic and unimaginative and required players to buy additional Pokemon figures to use in brawls. It was a Wii U Shop exclusive and the successor to Pokemon Rumble Blast, which was actually a well liked title and well received. So people expected just as much from this game, but instead, they were largely disappointed. And at 4, Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Before I jump into why this game doesn't work, let me read you a quote from the game's director, Aya Kiyogoku. I quote, Honestly, we just wanted Animal Crossing Amiibo. We wanted the company to make Animal Crossing Amiibo, so that's why we made a game that works with them. End quote. And guess what, friends? 
You should never make an entire game based off the idea of wanting to make an amiibo. That is whack. This game, an Animal Crossing spin off, is often referred to as a cheap Mario Party ripoff. It's a party game that failed to properly integrate amiibos successfully into the gameplay, despite the title, with critics calling the process cumbersome and hard to play with. The gameplay itself was criticized for being a snooze fest, and despite being charming, it was boring and repetitive. One critic even noted that the title felt like, I quote, a blatant attempt to get you to buy more amiibo, and not even a good one at that. Zing. Up next in our number three spot, Fling Smash. Fling Smash suffers from the same ailments that many of the other games on our list today are plagued by. Interesting concept, but boring AF in execution. Essentially, Fling Smash, which was released in 2010, is an action video game that made use of the Wii Motion Plus peripherals. It's paddleball, except with the Wii for the most part. And it didn't really do much more than that. Sure, it was entertaining at first, but clocking more than 10 hours in this title seems like an impossible feat thanks to its lack of creativity. For the most part, it felt like a title solely created to promote the Wii Motion Plus. Which is kind of true. And at number two, Devil's Third. Nintendo isn't known for creating gritty, violent games. So when they venture into that territory, often those kinds of genres struggle. Such was the case with Devil's Third, a hack and slash shooter released in 2015. But technically, their failure wasn't really Nintendo's fault. This game had minimal grit, but much cringe, and it was slammed by critics for its poor graphics. Many have speculated that the issues that the game had with its development led to it being released half baked. The game had initially been intended for the Xbox 360 as an exclusive, but the developers part partnership with Microsoft fell through. And then there was a whole kerfuffle over rights and publisher partnerships and associated companies went under at the time. So eventually, Nintendo was approached. And since the company didn't have a lot of online games, they decided to publish it. During the game's further development, engines were switched, since the original engine that was being built in no longer existed thanks to that parent company having closed down. Overall, big mess. In addition to that, the story was quite bad and it had a very short playtime to add insult to injury. By the end of the year, Devil's Third found itself on multiple worst games lists of 2015, including Polygons and GameSpots. And last but not least, in at number one, 3D Classics Urban Champion. We're ending off our list with the oldest title to appear on it. Well, sort of. It's actually a remake of an old title. Urban Champion was a title released for the NES, the very first 2D fighting game Nintendo ever published, which was in 1984. But in 2011, Nintendo re-released it as part of the 3D Classic series as a downloadable title for the Nintendo 3DS. Now, for starters, the original game already had some questionable failings, but the released version got panned hard and was criticized for being boring, shallow, and as one IGN critic put it, worse than actually falling down a manhole. Ouch. It was repetitive and way too simplistic, and didn't really put the 3D mechanics that the remake boasted to good use. It's also worth noting that no one ever thought that this game was a classic to begin with, so why it ended up on the 3D Classics roster is kind of a mystery to us. Alright, there we have it friends, what other Nintendo games would you consider to be some of the worst from the gaming giants? Give us a shout in those comments below and share your thoughts. If you like this video, spread that love, hit that like button, and be sure to subscribe to Top 10 Gaming for more lists just like this one. In the meantime, thanks for watching friends, I'll catch you all in the next video.